all of my fellow bibliophiles. Today I am going to be doing a book review on The Kiss of Deception by Mary E. Pearson. And just to warn you right now, this is going to be a book review of like my feelings and just general discussion about the book. And then it's going to go into a big book discussion towards the end of the video. Those of you that have read the book, definitely you can watch the this video from the beginning to the end but if you have not read this book I would suggest only watching like the first five minutes of it and then clicking out of the video just so you aren't spoiled for anything I give the kiss of deception a five out of five out of five out of five out of five stars on Goodreads I mean I know that's not possible but if I could like pick 10 million stars for this book I totally would I am absolutely positively in love with everything about this book. I'm in love with the characters. I'm in love with the whole plot twists. I'm in love with the mind-blowingness. I don't know who it was that said to me, Kat, you're gonna like be mind-blown. You are gonna be like mind games are gonna be played on you. Whoever said this, you were totally right. I just cannot believe what happened throughout this book. I was just in total awe and shock throughout this whole this whole entire 400 and some pages of Kiss of Deception and things were thrown at me and I went into this book not knowing much and not expecting much because I didn't want to you know be disappointed in it and I'm glad I didn't go in knowing much about this book because I was then so much more in love with this book and I just Mary E. Pearson's writing is definitely amazing I think that it is honestly very creative it is very it is a medievalish type read but it they don't have it's not a very big into like the old english language isn't huge in this book so if you are afraid to go into this book because of the old english the old english language do not worry the characters are amazing in this book you have the main character princess leah but her kind of actual well her real name is leah but her other name is arabella Princess Arabella, as her father would like to say, because Leah is not a princessy name, I guess. But you have her, and then you have just the assassin, and then you also have a prince. So this book has three main characters in it, and it switches point of view, just so you know, right now. It works so well with the switching of the point of views because it leaves you stumped so more. Now that I realize it, that now that I think about it, it just leaves you stumped so much more. And Kiss of Deception is about the Princess Leah, and she is to be betrothed to a different kingdom to create alliances. But that was not her plan. That is not what she wants in life. And so what she does is she runs away to the next village, and she literally immerses herself, and she becomes... A villager I guess you could say but the thing is is there's two people after her the prince who she was supposed to be betrothed to and an assassin and she falls in love with one of them and that is all I'm gonna say about that whole love issue because the, the love in this book is just so I just love it so flip freaking much it's just honestly one of my most favorite love kind of triangles in any books and I am not one for love triangles so if you are not one for love triangles I still suggest that you read this book because it's just perfect like every it's just so perfect and the plot throughout the book is just I, I'm gonna say it again it's just perfect you get a sense of the world the world is very vivid um, Mary E. Pearson definitely writes a very vivid world she explains a lot of the details she explains a lot of the different parts of her world she explains the different kingdoms and she even goes in depth with the map it becomes really important in my eyes because then you can actually visualize the world so much better like any map in any book but I definitely loved how she just created such a magnificent world and she created such magnificent characters there are just so many characters tied into this book and so many characters tied to Leah and it just made this book such an amazing experience to read and like I said before if I didn't give it if I could give it more than five out of five stars it'd be like 
10 million stars combined because it was just that amazing. And if you haven't read this book yet, I suggest that you definitely go pick it up because you will not regret it and you will love it just as much as me. And the next book is coming out. I don't know when, but the next book is coming out maybe sometime, hopefully soon, because the ending just leaves you wanting more and wanting to devour the next book because you want to know what happens next, because I want to know what happens next in, in Kiss of Deception. All right, guys, so if you haven't read this book, I would suggest clicking out of this video and then maybe coming back later when you have read the book to go into the book discussion. But if you have read this book, let us get into this book discussion. All right, guys, so since you have continued staying with this video, I'm assuming that you have read Kiss of Deception, so let's talk about this book. So let's first talk about the mind twistingness in this book. So I was reading this book and everything, and I was loving it. I loved all of the characters. I loved Leah and how she, her best friend, was her maid, her servant, and how she pretty much, they didn't have this plan to run away ever. She, they never had a plan to run away. They were just, it was a thought. It was a thought until one night when Leah, or Air, Princess Arabella, couldn't stand it anymore. And she pretty much just gave this look to her maid and they like just that silent communication was like we're leaving and we're leaving soon and they just got together and they planned and of course running away on the wedding day what an ironic situation I was absolutely stunned and loved the idea of the fact that they when they get married they have to paint the crest onto their back but whatever this crest was painted onto Leah's back it definitely obviously sticks around at least the major a part of it sticks around and I found that pretty cool because it does tie into the rest of the book, weirdly as it is. I just personally thought that the people that did her crest on her back were just like making sure it stayed there forever so they knew who she belonged to. I don't know. And then, of course, Leah's real kind of hate relationship with the Chancellor and the librarian guy is very, very interesting and how she ends up stealing stuff is absolutely, I don't know, I guess I find it funny, like, it's her way of getting back at them for all that she's done. I found that pretty dang cool. So obviously, they end up running away, Pauline and Leah, and they run away to Pauline's aunt, who kind of figures out that she's the princess, and oh my god, what a, a runaway princess, what the heck, but they immerse through themselves, and Leah is definitely loving this villager life, and all of a sudden, she just kind of wants to have love in her life. Well, obviously, two men walk in, Rafe and Caden, and this is where my confusion starts. I cannot believe how confused I ended up becoming. I wasn't, I didn't think I was confused until I found out Caden was the assassin and Rafe was the prince. I was... 100% sure it was the other way around. It pretty much said that Rafe was the assassin, and it pretty much said that Caden was the pr prince. Did it not? Am I am I going nuts here? But I'm pretty sure it said that Caden was the prince. And then, of course, I think it. What I don't know what happened, but it was like Rafe, and then it said the prince, and then it said Caden, and then it said the assassin. Maybe that's where they did it. Maybe somewhere in there, that is where they mix it up to think that one is one and one is the other, but it's not that way, it's the other is the other and the other is the other one. What just happened was just thinking, oh my god, she's going to fall in love with the an assassin. That is just so freaking cool. A princess and the assassin. I am like dead set on that. I'm like, okay, that's how it's going to be. Rafe is it. Well, I already chose Rafe already as the couple to be, and then to find out that what, he is the prince? And then it was all like these little pieces finally connecting, and this ancient book that she stole from the, the chancellor and the librarian dude, and the note that she left the prince. All I know is that I think the author intentionally put Caden and then the prince and then the assassin and then Rafe. I think she did a lot of like going switching back and forth between 
their names and then the prince and the assassin to make it seem like not really like continue thinking that it was Rafe as the assassin and Caden as the prince and you just didn't get out of that mindset because they really never explained descriptively what the characters looked like when they were the prince or the assassin so maybe I'm catching on a little bit I don't know all I know is is that I'm in love with this book and I can't wait for the next book to come out and Mary East Pearson's writing is freaking fantabulous. Alrighty guys, I hope you enjoyed that book review slash book discussion. Definitely leave your comments below about this book. Don't leave spoilers in the comments because they're, we don't want to spoil those that haven't read it yet. And just remember, tweet me or Instagram me and we'll definitely talk about it more in depth there. Or even email me and we can definitely talk about our theories there as well. Definitely give this video a thumbs up and also remember to subscribe to my channel for more videos. I'll see you guys at my next video. Bye!